Thanks for checking out our video series, Community Connections. The COVID-19 public health emergency has posed challenges for communities across the globe, not the least of which is staying connected with the citizens that make our communities great. These are the people that you see in the grocery store, the coffee shop, or walking their dog along the Duke. The intention of this video series is to bridge that gap and bring us together despite our physical separation. I hope you enjoy the segment. Hello, this is Larry Snyder, Deputy Fire Chief for the City of Williamsburg Fire Department. Uh, today, I'm sharing the screen with Les Hall. Uh, Les is a longtime uh, community advocate and a community um, engaged person, a longtime volunteer with our department, previous uh, president for our Williamsburg Volunteer Fire Department, um, is in been engaged in countless different community endeavors, uh, different boards and other ways in which uh, his, he and his family have been able to give back to our greater Williamsburg community. Hello, Les, how are you doing today? Hey, Chief, hope you and your family and the fire department family are all doing well. We are, thank you, we are. Great. Uh, we have I know a few... you're, you're a father of two young children. I know it's been tough for you, Chief, balancing uh, your duties at the fire station as well as being a school teacher, or gym teacher and uh, custodian and I guess maybe cafeteria lady too. Yeah, I would say that it's maybe a little bit more well-rounded and I would say perhaps better with time management. I don't know that I would go that far, but it certainly has been an opportunity to improve on both. That's for sure. <laughs> um, we, have, we have a few questions to ask and hope that you can give a little bit of information about yourself. Sure. Uh, how the pandemic has impacted you. So we'll get started. Sure. Well, Chief, personally, I'm not going out of the house as much trying to minimize direct contact with people, saving up errands to do them once or twice a week, uh, trying to get uh, deliveries like the drugstore, the vendors to deliver to the house, doing uh, curbside pickup food at uh, some of our great local restaurants. Uh, I miss interacting with people, uh, my girlfriend and her two college age children, uh, people on the street, folks you see at the post office, the bank, at church, out and about. I miss interacting with uh, members of the Kiwanis Club of Williamsburg, where I'm very active, members of the fire station. So uh, this too shall pass. We'll all be able to get together uh, very soon and have face-to-face -face direct contact. But professionally, I am a realtor with Hornsby Real Estate Company, and thankfully we can do some business remotely. Uh, interest rates are great. It's a great time to buy a house. Uh, I guess some folks, and I understand rightfully so, are hesitant to go out in public right now to see houses, especially ones that are still occupied. And I get that, but it's a great time to buy a house and uh, be able to do it remotely and uh, contact uh, free. Yeah, you know, you're that's a sentiment to hear a lot in terms of relationships. You, you know, I think this pandemic has made us all realize how much we enjoy that social interaction, that opportunity to spend time with folks. And, you know, and like even my meeting with you today, having to use a you know, a Zoom type style virtual uh, meeting, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's different. You know, you much rather be in person with folks to uh, just to have that, you know, that fellowship with one another. Well, you're exactly right, Chief. And I just had a real estate closing about uh, eight days ago. And from start to finish, we did it all remotely. And wow. about it was uh, had a, a key box on the house and we had 13 showings in three days. A contract was uh, uh, written and all um, done via DocuSign. We set up home inspections, termite inspections, movers, HOA packets, all done online. I didn't go in the house for about 50 days until I took the key box down last weekend. So technology wow. can be great. Although wow. this simple country boy had, had trouble getting on this uh, <laughs> system today. So it, you can teach an old dog new tricks. Well, we're, we're certainly glad you were able to figure out how to get on. Uh, what do you look forward to doing when the restrictions are lifted, Les? Well, um, I sort of look forward to getting a haircut at, at a real barber shop, having dinner with my girlfriend, just interacting with folks again. Uh, I am a, a handshake guy and a hugger, and I miss that. So I guess for now, I'll just have to be a, a waver from from six feet away or more. Yeah, I can I can appreciate that. Uh, what is one thing you wish you would have known before the pandemic? Well, uh, I guess we all knew what was happening internationally. Uh, with COVID-19, but many of us did not really know what was gonna happen uh, in the United States. The weekend of, of March 7th, uh, William Ray students had just gone on their spring break. I went to a steeplechase horse race in Culpeper on that Saturday. 
And then just a week later, things spiral down rapidly and everything's been shut down and locked and locked down. So it's amazing how things can, can change rapidly. Uh, I'm optimistic that things will change for the better, hopefully in about eight or nine weeks, like we've had this, this stretch here. But uh, I just wish we'd known uh, what to expect. So we could have planned more uh, stocking up on supplies, getting other affairs and that kind of thing. But I think we're all doing doing fine. No, I, I, I can assure I can relate to that. Uh, there's definitely some things, personally, from a preparation standpoint, I wish that I would have done as well. Uh, what is your favorite stay-at-home snack? Well, I've been uh, trying to drink more water and, uh, and, and fruit juice, but I'm splurging on goldfish. What a great snack. Uh, I'm, sure you've got, I'm sure you've got industrial-sized boxes of goldfish for your children around the house. That is true. You can only imagine the number of times a day that I get asked for goldfish for a snack. So, yes, I... Uh, I absolutely can relate to that. Well, big kids and little kids alike enjoy goldfish. That's right. Uh, how have you been spending the time at home? Well, um, unfortunately, I've been staying up uh, way too late watching uh, TV. And then uh, I uh, wake up later. It's sort of a vicious cycle, a bad habit I've got to break. But I've been doing uh, work remotely from home, obviously, with real estate, cleaning the house, doing chores, that kind of thing. I am ashamed to say that I've been watching way too much TV, um, but it's been great to see ch uh, childhood shows I watched when I was a youth, Emergency, Dragnet, Columbo, Adam 12, shows like that, along with a, a healthy dose of MASH and Perry Mason and Andy Griffith. Those are the staples that uh, I certainly enjoy. Uh, but it's been really neat. Uh, a friend of ours who grew up here in town, Rhodes Fishman, grew up on Capital Landing Road, he has a brand new show out on the Param, excuse me, on Spectrum app. It'll soon be on the Paramount channel called Paradise Lost. He is the writer, director, and producer. So it's been neat to watch his his first season of, of uh, his show, and we're looking forward to, to greater things with that. Very cool. Well, you've obviously been catching up and reminiscing with some classic TV now, uh, show. That's great. Nothing but the best. <laughs> so one of the critical questions that, you know, we've been trying to ask all of our guests through this Community uh, Connections program is sure. cornbread or biscuits? What do you prefer? Well, I'm a Williamsburg native and I'm a Virginian, so I think Virginians like both. And I think uh, I prefer cornbread with meals like uh, chili and, and barbecue, but, um, and by the way, Old City Barbecue on York Street does great cornbread. But I think uh, other meals like bref breakfast and hearty dinners require biscuits. So I think I like them equally the same. I'm a big boy, I don't miss many meals. So I've had a lot of cornbread and biscuits in my life. Very well, very well. Uh, obviously we talked when I introduced you, you've been a, you and your family have been huge um, folks in terms of community engagement and advocacy and being involved and trying to figure out ways that you guys can support. Uh, so what's one thing about the Williamsburg community that you're most proud of? Well, I'm certainly very proud of our community and all the volunteerism and, and acts of kindness that are going on every day uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, you know, churches and civic groups are organizing food drives to replenish food pantry shelves. Citizens have organized uh, with local restaurants meals to be given out to healthcare workers at our two uh, local hospitals. Um, the Williamsburg Community Foundation has this great new small business relief program. Citizens are dropping off uh, supplies and food at, at local police stations and fire stations for first responders. Um, there are all kinds of great things that are going on. And um, so the community, I think, has always been fantastic in supporting whatever's going on through thick or thin. I know we'll continue to do that um, until this is over. Um, being a, a tourist-based college town, obviously local businesses are suffering and there's a lot going on. And I'm very proud of our mayor, city council, and all of city staff for managing the city so well during unprecedented times. And in particular, this million dollar small business grant fund that the city just came up with um, is a great way to keep our small businesses afloat. And it's just a perfect example of, of neighbors helping neighbors. Uh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's some really good insight that uh, brings out truly what's been the best of our community. Uh, what is one thing you want Williamsburg to know? Well, uh, I think Williamsburg has always been a close-knit small town where we've all gotten along well. 
never really any, any race issues or class issues. It's a great small Southern town. And even though we've grown tremendously over the past 30 years or so, we still have many of those uh, Andy Griffith Mayberry small town characteristics that you saw in that show here in town where neighbors help neighbors and uh, strangers uh, alike. And uh, we don't know what the future holds. Uh, hopefully there'll be a COVID-19 antiviral drug soon and a vaccine, we just don't know. Will students be able to return to school K through 12? Will tourists return in 2020? Will we and Mary be able to reopen in the three short months? Freshmen come, I think, mid-August. So a lot of unanswered questions and a lot to consider. But I know we'll all get through this together as a community. There is light in the tunnel. Williamsburg is very resilient and um, we've always been that way and we will all persevere. Well, I appreciate it, Les. I really thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Uh, it's been my pleasure to spend a little bit of time with you and to kind of get your insight and, and to um, kind of be the facilitator so the, our community gets to know Les Hall a little bit better. So uh, thank you for that opportunity. Um, have a great day. Stay safe and healthy. The best wishes to you and your family. Chief, likewise, stay well. Thanks so much for including me. Thanks for joining us for Community Connections and for doing your part to help slow the spread. I hope that you will continue to find ways to stay connected and be engaged. We're stronger together.